Halbert holding, looking for Gustin. Nothing there. Wants Falatea, 35 feet away from the hoop. She's pressured. Falatea, right hand dribble to the baseline. Or bounce it across the baseline to Smiler. Bubakar, shot clock winding down. That's her shot blocked by Peely. Bubakar tried to throw it off of Peely. And it ends up as a second BYU turnover early in the first quarter. And not only is Peely the lead then on the offensive side, the defense is he just enters that defense. So strong in there, stepping over that half side to push the turnover. Strong move by Peely, offensive rebound, and off the glass on the second attempt. It's 4 0 Utah. Our starting lineups presented by Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Peely's been very busy. She'll be joined by Vieta, Meekins. On the BYU side, Falatea, Smiler, Gustin, Bubakar, and Calvert. Falatea finds a lane, forces up a layup at the hoop, and that one drops in for BYU's first two of the game. Good job, especially on Alyssa Peele, who's already gotten a couple buckets already, but contained for the drive and that post entry pass. Here is Johnson, who just made a nice defensive play on the opposite end. The three is just long, rebounded by Gustin, Falatea. Wants Bubakar streaking down the floor. Bubakar is fouled. Emotional game, but a lot of pressure on Falate and Gustin, and Rose can be that player that can relieve some of that pressure. First free throw is good. Now for the second. That also is perfect, and we're tied up at four. She's so physical in the post, and you can see what an advantage she has when she posts up on the block, even against the highest down. And she's such a tremendous pickup. We picked her up out of the transfer portal. She played at USC before coming to Utah. But she does her work early in the paint now. Stepping out for a three. How about that? Showing the range. Not only is she impactful on the inside, BYU is going to switch up their lineup and go small a little bit. They'll bring in Ariel Mackey Williams, who is an offensive boost on the BYU side. It is Peely 7 and BYU 4. Kick. Very good. On the dribble drive and the kick that time took it all the way and throws some contact. First free throw from McQueen is good. The sophomore out of Hennifer, Utah. This is a Utah team that's 7th in the nation in their free throw attempts. So they come in averaging just about 26 free throw attempts. BYU's done a good job not bailing them out when they are attacking and playing downhill. They're going straight up and not putting them on the free throw line. Cougars get some good looks at the hoop. But just one for ten to start the game. It's follow Taylor missed a point from the layup. And then the lane opens up wide for Sidbury. No defense once you got around the initial defender. Rotation's not there for BYU. And it's a seven-point Utah lead. No, it's just too easy, Spencer. That's where Rose Bubakar, she's got to just buckle down and stay in front of the basketball. Gustin. A much-needed bucket for BYU as she split the double team. To the hoop that was open to get a good look at a shot. Three on the way. That two is long. Both teams struggling from distance. Utah shooting the ball at a clip of almost 53% average on the season. Number one in the country. And Gustin is called to the offensive foul. Had the matchup she wanted in the post. And Palmer knows she's got, she was undersized in that situation at 5'9. Gustin is 6'1. Much stronger player she's going against. Had to sell that. Young. Her shot altered just a little bit. Gustin with the rebound. Poked away for a moment. Falatea there to collect to BYU and quickly to Ariel Mackey Williams. And the Barcelo into the game for the first time for BYU. Looking to set the screen on Falatea who goes away from that pick. Pass is deflected and stolen. Young. Step through. And a good patient move. To make it a seven point Utah lead once again, just over two minutes to play in the first quarter. It's 13 6. And that's where really Utah can break this thing wide open. If BYU gets turnovers, especially up top, they are so good in transition at converting. Cougars cannot afford to turn the ball over. Williams, Smiler for three. And she rattles it down. Haley Smiler. Right around 47%. Those two players out there are the best three point shooters. You gotta find your shooters. Crossover driven by Palmer and beauty. No more importance of being on the court and leading this team. You're going to see a reach in right here on that arm. It's a good call by the officials, and that's just something Politea cannot afford to do. So, with those two fouls, expectedly, Politea will have to sit on the bench. But without her in the game, how is the ball going to move and shots being created? Bubakar, straightaway three. 
well long and hard off the glass. Rebound tracked down by Young. 16-9, Utah leading by seven. TV back into the game, going right at Calvin. How about that move? And a beautiful left-handed reverse layup by Alyssa Peely. Jackie Williams dribbles out of his double team. Smiler cycles to Barcelo. Off the screen from Bubakar. Now back to Bubakar. So challenge Peely in the post. Bubakar. Utah in front by eight. And that one rims off. When you lose your top two players on the guard line, Paisley Harden and Shaley Gonzalez, I don't care what team you are, it's going to be hard to overcome losing those two type of players. This, that was a six seed BYU team in the NCAA tournament as Peely turns and scores again. Really defending and making every pass hard for BYU. Seven on the shot for Augustin. Little floater. And that's too strong. He just cannot get a look. And Augustin is so crucial to what they do to get touches on the offensive side that in and out with her. She's one for three to start the game. Peely again around Calvert. And while she has a size disadvantage in height, she does have the physicality, and she's got that quick first step that she's given Calvert all types of problems. She's very skilled with the ball in her hands, so she has that ability to take a larger defender, a taller defender, off the dribble, and then utilize her angles around the rim. Barcelo, right wing three is good. Amanda Barcelo has been a quiet, but yet emerging bright spot for BYU. So take a shot, everything's a little bit rushed. And there's just two offensive rebounds. That's partly strategy, too, because Amber Riding wants everyone back but Dustin. So you're really getting just one shot and done because too many red jerseys around BYU. The biggest concern right now is what Utah's doing off the dribble. They're driving to the basket, and that either ends up in a layup or a foul. Is just concerned that the on offense they're being way too tentative at this point. 6-2, sophomore forward, rattles in the second. Smiler. Face up on McQueen. Left side wants Gustin. But again, so many hands in passing lanes. It's just tough to make what looks like would be a simple pass. Good athletic move by Rose Bubakar to beat a really solid defensive effort as uh, Utah as a team collectively set up and did a nice job. It's going to take that type of effort from BYU to score against this team. Gustin running the floor. And Gustin, that one rooms off, rebounded by Amanda Barcelo. The Cougars will have another opportunity. She was going to fall out of bounds. And an unfortunate break for BYU as she just has to throw it back into Reese. Open three in transition, and it's good. Gianna Neepkins. Looking for some help and finds it in Falatea. Crossover dribble on by Falatea, and she gets to the hoop. And there's something that Jason Shepard was just talking about. But Falatea's had an easier time getting to the hoop. Vieta, step through. Leaves the layup short. Gustin battling with Vieta. Falatea. Got around Vieta again. And maybe Nani Falatea has discovered something with Vieta pressuring her 30 five feet away from the hoop. And for BYU, you keep going to that. Go to that until they stop it. Utilize the big coming up in that pick and roll, and she can go away from it or use the screen. Healy. Layup doesn't go. Offensive rebound and put back scored by Taylor Sidberry. And those are the second chance opportunities we were talking about, getting those points off the oak boards. the car. Get away from her. Smiler. Wins it back for BYU. And that Sidbury throws up a tough shot, bailed out by a foul call. Try to draw some contact, get yourself to the free throw line. They're having a hard time figuring out how to score. And BYU has cut that Utah lead back to eight. It's been as many as 12, two different points in this first half. Peely, at Gustin. Power on power and advantage, Alyssa Peely. 15 first half points on 7 of 11 shooting. Well, she's too good not to double team. And, and BYU's been playing her straight up. They tried with Calvert, now with Gustin. And at some point, they might have to transition to a zone or at least double her. And there you see Palatea once again. And she is just having her way off the bounce. So versatile, using her crossover, her hesitation to get her stuff to the rim. And you follow Taya with 8 points. Marcelo cuts off Young on the baseline. Rainbow three drops in 
for Izzy Palmer. Three for ten overall from distance. You know, he's done a pretty good job limiting their shots outside. Talatea again getting to the hoop. Looks like the ball almost slipped out of her hand as she went to attempt that layup. Palmer with six points. They also averaged close to 20 points at the free throw line. That's something in the nation, so they do an excellent job getting there. Screaming in hopes that they would see her, did not. Mackie Williams. Well, Johnson picks up her second, so on a positive note, Johnson has two, Peely has two, and Nipkins has two for the Utes. If you're BYU, that's a good thing. Who the call? Nine point lead for Utah. Took that ball right on her head. That should have been a carry. Young. Oh, just staying with it. And here is Falate. Matched up to Palmer. There's a tip pass. Falatea. Fading away from the bucket. She's getting again to the hoop. The tough finishes. Not dropping down for the Cougars. Sidberry to Young. She fires up the three with a hand in her face and knocks it down. Average is 29% coming in, but she's playing well. Last couple possessions, being aggressive, looking for a shot. Game high, 14-point lead for Utah. 15 seconds on the shot clock, 21 on the game clock, about a six-second differential there. So Utah will get the ball back once again unless BYU... He's able to maintain possession with some type of offensive rebound, but the Cougars got to get a shot off for three and two on the shot clock. Matthew Williams has Dustin, and patient offense works out for BYU. With two and one, Palmer will fire it up from 60 feet. Banks off the glass right side. And go to the Frankly, they take really good care of the ball, Kristen. Just the three turnovers that we were talking about a little bit ago in the first half from Utah. There's so many players that can handle the ball, right? That ball control, it's not falling on the shoulders of just one player like you see with BYU and Nani Politeo. Just a really, really tough make by Alyssa Peely, who now has 17 points. She's always working, working to find that ball and angle herself. And and she's a constant for Lynn Roberts. That's what she said. I mean, the pickup from USC, she was fantastic at USC 2019, 2020. She was the freshman of the year in the Pac-12, so very well known in the Pac-12. Early turnover by BYU, a ninth of the game, Nipkins. Wide open for three, and that's easy pickings for the Utes. We talked about it in the open. She does have nine straight double-doubles, ties for first in the NCAA. Dustin puts to Bubikar. The hoop, and that one falls over for an end one opportunity. If she can put it on the floor and draw in some defense, it opens up shots like that for Rose to go to work. Bubikar misses the free throw. She's now three for five from the charity strike today. Healy, another solid post move. Just so smooth with it on the block. Alatea pulled up from the left elbow, left it short, with the shot clock winding down. So again, Utah with the basketball leading by 17. Baseline pass, Deepkin's three is perfect. And now the Utes have pushed it to a 20-point advantage. Somebody needs to rotate over and help. 10-2 run to open the half. How about Lauren Gustin? Not finding it a lot around the rim, so stepping out and hit it from the outside. Seven points and nine rebounds for Justin. Healy, offensive rebound. Calvert got the block shot. Falatea, matched up on Vieta. Two-man game with Barcelo. Again, Falatea, a lot of work off the dribble. How about that shot? And... She's a workhorse in there, very consistent. Sometimes it's hard because she has so much on her plate and she's double teamed as we've seen in this game. Utah putting a double team on her. She continues to work. Seven points, 11 rebounds for Gustin. And Falatea is kept in play by Young. Just one working on Barcelo. And the other fans and coaches on the double dribble. Young missed the shot at the rim. BYU three on three, Falatea, smooth to the hoop, with the left-handed scoop off the glass. Smart, smart play from Falatea. She knows how hard points are to come by, so in transition, taking it as we see Palmer right back, said, I'll answer you too. She's fun to watch.
I was talking with some of the men's basketball staff for BYU and I pointed out that Nani Falatea lives in the gym. I'm joking with you. We don't know what else she does. Like, does she ever do homework? We don't know. It shows. The players that are gym rats and come to the gym first and leave the gym last, it shows on the court. And Falatea is one of those players. Smiler spent significant time in the gym as well getting healthy. She had a nice move right there for BYU. Healy does not matter how many defenders you throw at her on the BYU side. She muscles it up and in, and she's got a game-high 21 points to go along with five rebounds on 10 for 14 shooting. That was against Gustin, and I'm telling you, Gustin is a strong player out there, and Healy was able just to back her down. Matthew Williams driving left side, has a shot blocked and collected by McQueen. Bubakar hustling back to cut off McQueen. Peely thought about a three, now opts for... An even better option with Taya Sidbury in the post. She scores off the glass. And just like that, it's back out to a 15-point lead. Sidbury, 6'1 freshman. He's posting up in there. Barcelo's got to get around. Not allow her just to sit there and get an easy top of the key entry pass. Here's those turnovers piling up for BYU. 6-0 run for Utah. 51-40, now it's 57-40 in the blink of an eye scene. And the turnovers just continue to hurt BYU throughout the season. Gustin, long jumper is good, and Lauren Gustin showing the range here today. Sidbury, Palmer, entry pass, Peely, shot block, but stays with it and scores. That's a tough, that's a tough part. You think you think you got her stopped, but, but just non-stop. Consistently go. Final second to the third quarter. And, oh, late foul call. It's been a fun matchup to watch in this third quarter frame where we've seen Gustin and Peely guarding each other more so than the rest of the game. Both of the stars have showed up today. Second free throw wins off. Gustin. You see the double team. Nipkins right there waiting to double team Gustin if she's going to make a move. Pass out of the post to tip, deflected. She's on the Cheryl Miller Award watch list. That's for the top small board and nice trophy award. But then consistent for Coach Lynn Roberts. Well, that's the thing. Even if Nipkins, the reigning Pac 12 freshman of the year, as you pointed out, doesn't have a great game, there are five other players for Utah that at any point and on any given night can go for 20 plus so even if Peely and Meat Kings are struggling and on the flip side Utah's got a five or six headed monster to her credit Rose Bubakar has played a nice game nine points four rebounds did have a career high 18 points against Colorado State so very capable but being consistent they've seen it from Falatea and Gustin so far it's that consistency they need Palmer's three is no good and the Calvert with the rebound challenge for BYU even after this game against Utah. you got to open up West Coast Conference play on the road at Gonzaga, who's picked to win the conference. And then you got to play Portland, who's another team that could sneak in there and win the conference. Nani Falatea. Her confidence growing. She's got 16 points. 8 for 16 from the field. And she's got a couple of assists to go along with that. The both teams opening up their conference play next week. Utah will play Colorado a little bit earlier. They're playing their Travel partner, as Coach Lynn Roberts said in December, and they will play a few more non-conference games right after Colorado, then pick it up again with the Pac-12 play. Valatea bounces to Gustin. Beautiful play inside. And the Cougars are only going to have so many opportunities to get this thing closer, because at some point the efficiency of Utah will re-engage. Speaking of, Leafkins on the handoff, goes to the hoop and gets a big bucket. With a good answer. Justin in the post, working on Peely, and too strong on the layup. And the Cougars are only going to have so many opportunities to get this thing closer, because at some point the efficiency of Utah will re-engage. Speaking of, Leafkins... They go back to their leader inside and Peely and have her get touches. Peely's done a good job with the double team though, so when that ball goes in, you gotta split, you gotta relocate so she can find shooters. 
Falatea with five on the shot clock, four and three. Off the screen, Nani Falatea, left-handed layup, and she got it to go to beat the shot clock buzzer. Her hand as much as possible down the stretch. Last five minutes, Falatea needs to be creating off the dribble because she has been so effective. Meepkins. Oh, what a huge three! Double-team Calvert, here's Falatea, wide open three. And she can't answer back. Meepkins will hand back to Peely. Hesitation move at Dustin, your star, and Utah does. Well, she just reminds me of Falatea. When she took that ball, just the smooth, I mean, it, it just looked like it flowed right to the wind. She had a little bit of inside-out fake with her body movement that got Dustin to jump on it. And again, the coach said she did the unicorn. Nice assist from Falatea. Able to utilize off the bounce to create. So she, if she's going against a taller defender, she can put it on the floor. If not, we've seen her come out. If the defender is tall, she can come out and hit it or go inside. And she hasn't had any trouble going inside against the Orion. Two seconds on the shot clock. And holding up to 67 at this point. I know we got three minutes to go, but number one team in scoring offense and assist, field goal percent, and BYU. Maybe some new coaching additions for the BYU football team and the BYU men's team in a battle with number 21 Creighton later tonight, neutral site in Las Vegas. Busy weekend, lots to talk about on Monday at noon Eastern, 10 a.m. Mountain on BYU TV and Sirius XM Channel 143 BYU Radio. Falatea, patient offense. Smart just hanging right around the rim, getting herself at a good angle where Falatea can bounce that pass. 16 points, 15 rebounds now for Lauren Gustin. Dynamic duel with those two players for BYU. And McQueen and Utah. It's been a little more aggressive, just wanting to really just nail this down and make sure that they seal this victory. Peely spins, finds the open knee pins. Oh, what a pretty shot. And yet, Palatea, and this is a scoop there, has still poured in 18 points, has five assists. It was a good look. She just didn't quite finish it. And I think that she's getting a little tired of this game for how hard she's had to work to create to get to the rim and play downhill every possession. Healy spins around Woo! Dustin. Oh, spin cycle. A really good team last year to an elite level this year. And she's undersized at six foot two, but it does not matter. Plays much bigger than she is. She's explosive. Very talented family. She's, she's one of nine kids. Eight siblings. Falatea's got another assist. And Kaylee Smiler. Three doesn't go. Barcelo crashing the offensive glass. Has it for BYU. Looking for some help. Finds it with Smiler once again. 15 on the shot clock. About 30 seconds to go in the game. Smiler spinning at the hoop. And trying to get the layup to go. Rivers trying to add a couple of more on here late. When they average 97, they may hit another shot. But BYU also, they finished with 14 turnovers unless they turn it over here again. And that's a huge positive for this team. Certainly. And against the pressure, Utah defense to only turn the ball over 14 times. Another, another positive talking point for the team that averages 97. Alyssa Peely, well-deserved applause. City in the hill. Down to watch their undefeated and 15th-ranked Utes win this rivalry game against BYU. 76-59 as that free throw drops in. Falatea can't score there on the scoop. And now Vieta will dribble out the clock. 15th ranked Utah remains perfect in the 2022-2023 season with a 76.